All right, folks, how's everybody doing? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Bubbles, the podcast about comics, pop culture, and anime. Um, as always, I'm Terry Williams, and to my far left is my co-host, Mr. Ben Dunn. Hello, salutations, greetings. And then in the middle, you will notice another presence here today, um, someone to break up this monotony of these two old guys. Uh, we have <laughs> a friend of mine for many years, Miss Stephanie Nadalny. Hi, guys. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. So for all of you folks who may know Stephanie and those of you who don't, um, she is one of the most talented folks that I've ever known um, as far as everything that she's done. Again, I've known her a long, long time, so um, her history is quite extensive, but you probably know her as a voice, a voice of Kid Gohu. Kid, no, Gohan, I'm sorry, and Kid Goku. That's correct? right. Kid Gohan and Kid Goku. Kid Al- Goku and Gohan. <laughs> <laughs> along, <So> with, <laughs> along with numerous other. Yes, it was cool. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Baby I Trunks. Was, ah. oh I'll my keep goodness. going if you want I know, to. this is amazing. She did that without helium. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what amazes me. So, I wanted you on. I've been after you to be on, um, bothering you, I know, bugging you to Not at all. please come on. No, it finally um, worked. Just because I want to know, I know before, I know high school, I know all of that, but how did you get started with the voice acting? Where did, what made you think, because I know you from Fence, Fans, and the Valiants, all this other stuff, but Mm -hmm. not Singing. Yeah. Mostly singing music. Um, Well, my contacts through music is what ended up getting me the audition um, for what I didn't have an idea what it was other than it was a cartoon. But yeah, I, I started out in music and musical theater. You know, I did a lot of the Shakespearean stuff mm-hmm. in Durant when I was growing mm-hmm. up with, with my friends. Um, I sang in church. I did talent shows, community theater, um, pom pom, drill team, anything involving performance, um, specifically musical theater, where you could kind of do a lot of the same, a lot of those in in the same production. So um, that was kind of my passion. Uh, you know, there was a time when I wanted to pursue Broadway and. Um, and things like that. Um, but I was just, you know, gaining as much experience as I could growing up. Um, if it were up to me, I would have started as a child in the industry, but, um, parents were a big no, no on that. We were, you know, seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. Uh, Although my mom, rest in peace, my mom was my, my biggest fan and, um, was always very supportive of that. Um, basically what happened is I auditioned for, uh, a band right out of high school. Um, and somebody across the street heard my, um, voice coming through the window. It's kind of a funny story. I, I don't tell this very often, but I was I was you know hired to be in a in a band and co- basically like a college band. And um, there was another guy across the street that was a really well known singer in Denton, Texas. And I was going to college at UNT for music. And um, he asked me to audition for his band, which was Lindy and the Look. And the same um, I guess agent booking agent. Uh, was also the agent for Vince Fans and the Valiants, and they needed a girl singer that could do all of the things that I had had so much experience in, singing, dancing, and acting, and improv and comedy and things like that. So I auditioned for that one, and next thing you know, I'm in the on the road with a show band. Vince Vance and the Valiants, been, uh, been around since 1971. I joined uh, at their 20-year reunion, actually, that year. And then I met other musicians and just, you know, constantly in the industry, you know, meeting and greeting and... I um, was approached about doing um, an album, like an original project with with Carl Finch of Brave Combo, and they're out of Denton, and they're an award-winning, a Grammy award-winning polka band, and um, coincidentally, Nadalny is Polish, I'm Polish, so no wonder, I like polka music, let's bounce, let's dance, and then that's kind of how it started, right, it's fun, and then um, he um, had me come and audition for um, Hell in the Hen on Chuck E. Cheese, so I was able to do a season with them until they changed ownership. And then from there, I got auditions for Jimmy Toys, and that's when I became, like, the voices of all these different little bunnies and hamsters and reindeer and just anything and everything. But the cool thing about that one is I could sing in in the character voices, Mm -hmm. which I think is what I think is a little bit more of a unique talent, I guess. Oh, yeah. And then from there, I got the audition for um, Dragon Ball Z, which I didn't know anything about. I didn't even know it was anime till much later. But, um, yeah, somebody heard me in the studio singing for Brave Combo and asked me to come audition wow, wow. and audition for all the female voices being that I'd done mostly, you know, theater acting and musicals. So, um, but they asked me specifically if I could do a, the voice of a, of a young boy and I have 
lots of references. I have a brother, stepbrothers, and <laughs> kids in school. Yeah. I had lots of uh, people to, you know, that inspired me to, to uh, come up with something unique. And w- what they heard was they liked, and um, they just said, make it a little more raspy, and we're good. And that's what became the voice of Gohan, at least from that point on, that's until so cool. through the Cell Saga. And then from there, I got auditions for Goku and Dragon Ball. And they the company was really small at the time. It was called Funimation, and there was just one studio, one ADR director, and things just kind of kept progressing, and they kept getting properties. And um, then I started singing anime themes for Kitty Grade and Yu Yu Hakusho, started helping with lyrics and directing other singers, wow. which was really, really neat because I'd had experience mentoring young so uh, what, female what singers. So did you start actually doing... Um, the Dragon Ball Z stuff? Um, uh, the, the actual voice acting started around 96 and 97 with Jimmy Toys um, and then recording original music oh, with so Carl Finch, so 97. Newer. But I auditioned for Dragon Ball Z in 98 and was cast the end of that year. Wow. wow. So you were, you're all, you were uh, on the bandwagon early. Yes. And then the whole uh, like I said, I would have started as a child. I would have. I was ready to be in showbiz at, <laughs> oh, I think, so age cool. Four or five, when I—that's when I knew. Well, when I, did you find out you had such a range of voices that you're uh, able to? That you know. was something I <laughs> just did anyway. Like I, you know, would um, I as soon as I could get my hands on um, some way to record, which ended up at the time being a cassette player, mm-hmm. cassette recorder. Remember those? I do. <laughs> I'm sure Josh doesn't, but the rest of us do. I, I know, Mr. Youngster over I'm there. I'm going to sneak in and <laughs> just say that I had plenty of cassettes. I know what a cassette was. <laughs> yes. But once, I mean, I remember getting one, I think, for Christmas, and I was maybe almost eight years old. I remember just being completely consumed by that mm-hmm. because I had been playing piano by ear, and I was always wanting to write songs and poetry and just you know, creativity was just like something I just enjoyed doing anyway. Um, so I would just record my voice and I would just be silly being, you know, a kid. Yeah. And um, I would just record different voices and I would write songs and I would sing them and I would just have fun with these blank cassette tapes oh, yes. and carry it around and I would record other people and I would record off the TV and I just would just mimic back oh, um, to see if I could... It was something I did for fun and something that uh, actually contributed a lot to my career now because I'm able to produce so many different sounds, you know, and mimic different characters and come up with a, original ones oh. or take a take a voice and then change it up just enough to make it sound like something completely different. Oh, wow. So I was already kind of doing that. I yeah. just didn't like... I'm going to be a voice actor. Like, that wasn't ever really like I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I watched cartoons, and mm-hmm. I listened to the voices, and I was always, in like, really blown away by that right. and would ma- mainly just mimic back. But my first love and passion was singing and music, and you, then it just you still expanded. want to do that? Is oh, yeah, yeah. I still I still sing with a, uh, my own group. I uh, put my own group together. Uh, it's What's called Moonglass Moon Glass Band. Oh, very nice. Um, nice. The Comic-Cons that I'm working now are pretty much every weekend. So right now we've got like a slight hiatus unless we get like a, a job during the week that we can work at like a steakhouse or a, a special occasion or a private party or something that's booked in advance. Nice. Um, do you write your own music? or uh, I've written some. And most of what I've written that I've been able to produce um, – are some novelty songs for for like kids. Um, oh, Cal- nice. uh, Halloween Rocks is one that's on YouTube and Kids Christmas and actually wrote um, parodies and jingles for TM Century Comedy Radio Comedy Network, which is right here where we are in this building. I was coming hey. here like, am I going to get a single jingle today? No way. Oh, not today. Oh, well, so we hope yeah. that you'll do oh, some right demonstrations for yeah. yeah, that's right. They do the all the jingles there. I forgot about that. Right, yeah. right. That's so um, funny. They, they used me more um, for the par- parodies mm. and for writing songs and changing the lyrics, kind of like a Weird Al, Weird oh, Al Yankovic. And awesome. so we would write... Um, uh, a turkey like this, which was like a, a, a moment like this, is like a turkey like this, and it would be all about Thanksgiving. It, so it started kind of around holidays for me, and yeah. because I like children and I love comedy, it just kind of progressed from there. And I was brought in to sing ones other people have written and had written, and that's when I decided to start writing my own. And I, have, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, Broccoli Spears is oh, one that I wrote awesome. that's about uh, each each your veggies when you oh dine, oh squash and tomatoes. Like, <laughs> so it's just funny stuff like that, you know, um, that I've always found to be hilarious. And so I think that's where I learned that I really wanted to work with 
character voices, which are tend to be more comedic and cartoony, as opposed to really going into like straight up heavy dramatic mm, acting. Right. Um, I probably could have done that, but I think I'm just naturally better at the kind of weird, wacky stuff. You know, I love kids and I love to laugh and I love to make people laugh. So yeah. it kind of makes sense that it just kind of was a little bit more natural for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, directors and casting agents probably noticed that more so than some of the others. This is this is producer Joshua just cutting in. I'm a big fan and I've watched all of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z oh, with her voice just playing and me never knowing who this person was. So to meet this, the Yay. put a face to the person is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I looked you up a little bit before this before this podcast. You were born in Memphis? Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Memphis you, thank you very were, much. Did you grow <laughs> up in Tennessee? I uh, I did for the first few years of my okay. life. I, we did live there until I was about five. Okay. And we moved. Um, my parents decided to get out of Memphis and move to Houston, so we, mm. we moved to Texas. And then from there, uh, my parents split. My mom remarried a year later, and we were moving literally like every two yeah, years. Right. I never got to really stay and kind of stay put until sure. till really till now, till so, adult years. So what what was, uh, I guess one of my questions is, what is your biggest like musical inspiration? And then uh, when you went into voice acting, right. what was one of your voice acting inspirations? If it you had started any? with Donna Summer specifically. Ooh. I heard nice. her sing and I was absolutely mesmerized with her oh, voice. Yeah. My dad had disco cassette tapes. <laughs> we had albums too, Those are awesome. but we were riding around in the car a lot. Oh, and yeah. the, the big thing mm-hmm. was the switch from eight tracks to cassettes in, the, in, in your car. Yeah. Yep. And I remember yep. my dad had a big... Giant play, Monte no Carlo, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so a lot of skipping. So yeah, dad was really into into. Uh, <laughs> both my parents were they were young parents. They were both the oldest of four. Um, thankfully, they were both music lovers. None of them, wow. neither of them, were musicians, nor did they have aspirations to be into the, in show business at all. I just came out of nowhere, like we here I am. This is what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. And so I I was pretty much performing for whoever would be an audience from, I mean, I remember my first memories being on the, the merry-go-round, putting on concerts. We don't have merry-go-rounds anymore. Oh, my goodness. They're so dangerous. The slides, yeah, oh, you know, they're like, yeah. Um, yeah. Really hot. Really, really hot. Burn just, your skin off yeah. your legs. We didn't care. We liked it. It just made you tougher. Yeah. Well. It did. Yeah. We're resilient. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so. Drank out of the water yeah. hose, right, and we yeah. were gone for hours all day y'all long. Don't, you don't drink out of the water hose anymore? Uh, the uh, 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 olden days. To, but yeah. Yeah, now it's a water bottle. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah things have it. changed. But yeah. Donna Summer was the the the, the voice that kind of pierced through awesome. the darkness. Awesome. And it's also when there was disarray around me, like with the family splitting and not knowing and moving a lot, it, that music became my escape. And it became what I grew up with when you talk about nostalgia. You know, everybody mm-hmm. has something they grew up with, whether it's comics or, you know, music or dancing or sports or you know, com- well, comic books. Like, you know, they, mm-hmm. there's something that we all do that bring, takes us back to being a child. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was music and it was disco specifically. And uh, Neil Diamond was another big that influence. Was, yeah. yeah. So I had uh, a little bit of contemporary pop, a little bit of old style country for my stepdad. And then my father mm-hmm. was more that 70s disco vibe. Um, and then, of course, we had our our 80s music. Oh, yeah. 80s yeah. babies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, music was always in my life, and that was always my go-to. And nice. even now when I'm, you know, when I'm reeling or I'm anxious or something's going on, I, I sit down with the piano and I start playing around, and, and that's kind of how I can escape from the madness of this crazy life we have. Um, so that's where it all started with me. And then that's when it, you know, the mimicking was just something I was doing naturally. Right. Um, or if I'd hear a cartoon, I would try to mimic the, you know, Papa Smurf, Papa Smurf. You know, I'd try to, you know, mimic those voices for fun. And, yeah. um, you know, it was just something I did because I thought it was hilarious. Mm. And then I got into sound effects. And then I got my first Casio, piano, you know, keyboard. And it made all these cool sounds. And I could make it, you know, just. Wow. It's amazing. So when when you actually go when you actually go in to do voices, um, do you have a voice in mind, or does the director tell you this is the kind of voice I'm looking for, or you try to mimic the actual original source material? Right. It all depends. Like I mean, for me, I mean, the cool thing is when I got recruited into work at Jimmy Industries, just you know, as a contract vocalist, you know. Um, it was really a good way to jump in because it was pretty much like rapid fire. Uh, okay, 
you're a kid, you're five years old, you're scaring people, you're you've got you know you're dressed up like a a ghost. Go, boo, did I scare you? You know, like I just came up with all these crazy, ooh, ah, and then they would take these sound files and we would do as many as we could that they thought they would capture what they need for that specific like toy Mm -hmm. um and then it went you know went from there and i'd i'd be there for maybe two hours and i'd have done maybe 30 30 something voices and they were all different they were you know i remember doing a session that was specifically easter so we did you know what would a little bunny you know what would a bunny sound like you know say up and down the bunny trail you know just (laughs) we would just sing songs and um that was more fun for me because i'm a singer and i love music so I liked it all because it was challenging and I never knew what I was going to be doing that day. So I basically just followed direction. Um, Every once in a while, I'd get a picture of the character and I'd be able to think about in my head what I could come up with, which was, you know, also really fun for me. And really, I do that anyway, you know, all the time. Like, what would that person sound like? What would that? And some of my friends thought I was making fun of them too. And I'm like, no, I'm just seeing (laughs) if I can mimic your voice. Like, uh, so as I got older, you know, some people would get kind of offended. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just trying to, I'm practicing. Yeah. You know, because I'm a really nice person. So they'd be like, are you making fun of me? I'm like, no, I want to see if I can sound like you. And it's just, it's, it's, so it's like a, a like it's a habit of nature, you know. Yeah, it's, it's part. It's part of your work. A personal know? challenge. Yeah, my I'm, uh, some of my relatives up in uh, Rhode Island, as the my Polish relatives, you know. I remember one was like, "Ah, oh, Stephanie, how you doing?" <laughs> and then from there, you know, uh, oh, yeah. I know, you know I don't. I I am not on camera, accents. but I I have tan skin. I am a quarter Polish, so that was a perfect <laughs> like. A quarter Polish. Yes, yeah, that was literally my grandmother on my dad's side, and that was incredible. Isn't Thank you for cute? doing that. My yeah. aunt Manya, rest in peace. Oh my god, I, she's living vicariously yeah. through my boys. That's literally my grandmother oh, on my dad's wow. side. It's yeah, and all my aunts and uncles <clears> and. And then, yeah. you know, my, my grandfather, who has yeah. still had that accent till his mm-hmm. passing, he oh, yeah. still, ah, uh, you, know, you know, he would just have that that ex- accent that was kind of like, get over here, get out of here, you bother me, uh, you yeah. get away from me. You know, not, he wasn't always like that, but, <laughs> but I, I would just mimic that when it came time to like, you know, do audition. Because it's funny because I don't l- try to limit myself anymore. I always felt like I was kind of squashed and limited by my surroundings and having to move and, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. There's jealousy and all that stuff mm-hmm. with different kinds of, you know, move to a new town and then all of a sudden you want to audition for the play. And it was just, it was really interesting trying to navigate that part of this whole thing. But um, it, it was just, I just knew that was, it was something I always wanted to do. And that was what I pursued. So I had a, I had a fire, you know, that I has always been there. And I just, you know, I just go after whatever project I, I think someone might, you know, what, that I might fit the project. So right now I'm in audition phases and I'm in the process of getting another agent and uh, trying to get more opportunities to audition for different types of voice, you know, whether it be video games or um, anything. Yeah, I, like I said, I won't limit myself. So if, if there's an audition that leaves it open, say, mm-hmm. hey, we, we need someone to play like this age, female, this age, male, maybe a child of each and then even an elderly voice i'll I'll tackle an, an old man voice let's <laughs> try it you know or i don't know i i just don't like to limit myself because sometimes some of my wacky character voices are what i end up with mm-hmm. and if you're cast that's work and that's right. great um so sometimes the ones that i think are the most obvious that i think i can do better the the director thinks oh no you'd be great for this right, this voice right, or right. You know, another young boy, or maybe the little boy has a stuffy nose or something. You know, and I just would come up with w- weird, wacky stuff. Mm-hmm. And if they like it, great. If anything, you know, it's it keeps me on my toes. The auditions, mm-hmm. whether I get mm-hmm. cast or not, it's like it's great experience. And it's yeah, like right. maybe it at least gets me a little bit more exposure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that people don't realize is just how you know skilled voice acting has to be. Mm-hmm. You know, the the the. I'm sure this is just a recent trend, you know, like maybe the last 10 years. I think we started when Shrek came out. Oh, They're yes. Using, uh, celebrity right. to voice things, which, you know, while they may be good actors, they may not necessarily be good voice actors. Oh, yeah. Right. You know? Right. And, there, that's a big issue, actually. I've, I'm hearing lots of stuff about that. That and AI coming in mm-hmm. and trying to tackle and take yep. over a lot of the creative. Wow. Well, that's a great well, That's, a whole, that's, that's a whole other s- episode. Oh, we need to do this same again. Way. We <laughs> could do this the same way. Yeah. Let's, I was going to, yeah, we can either talk about Excuse it now me. or we can make yes. a whole other episode <laughs> yeah, on that one. Yeah. That's, well, the thing about it is, is, is that people don't, they see the end product. Mm-hmm. Okay. They don't see the hours of, 
uh, voice actors go through to mm-hmm. find the right pitch, to find the right tone, to find the right, you mm-hmm. know, just the right characteristic, you know, right. The and then to stay and, in the voice and right. to really know your consistent. character, yeah. right? Yeah. Because sometimes you'll come in for an hour or two, and then you won't come in for a month or two or three, absolutely, depending on the role that you have and and mm-hmm. if you're a re- you know recurring character, or if you're just right. a a one time one episode. Yeah, you know, I mean, in, I mean, uh, true to you, you are a master of voice acting, and certainly you have the ability to change your, your to change who the, you're portraying. Okay, you have that flex. Like you said, you could play a, a very young child, mm-hmm. a male or female, which is mm-hmm. fascinating to me that so many uh, female Females. voice actors play male characters. <laughs> uh-huh. I never yeah. would have imagined. I mean, well, for ten years, I thought Bart Simpson was same. played by a right. male right. character. Right, you know? right. You know? and, uh, Mom, uh, it's spoken. Mom, it's spoken. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't you know? prove that I wasn't there. You know, it's like I don't know. Think that <laughs> girls, females, whatever age, can produce that right. same youthful sound yep. throughout mm-hmm. their lives. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I, that's probably what started that whole thing. Um, although there are times that they do use, you know, depending on the the project, they do use. Real children, well, so oh, yeah. guys uh, like, young children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because either, <laughs> once our voice cracks, it's yeah, done. that's it. Man. Yeah. There's no going back to that. Time to right. change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that was the one. That was the one thing I always have with uh, male. With uh, male, uh, like whenever you get a voice crack. They don't keep talking. They just stop. You yeah. know, they're just yeah. like, they okay, just, we're they done. Stop yeah. because yeah. it's like, oh, that's the end of my all the <laughs> exactly, know, yeah. confidence that, I had. Yeah. My voice cracks. Well, and then like talking. with Peanuts, they I know some of the Peanuts actors that you know voiced on the '70s oh, right. movies yeah. that we grew up mm-hmm. watching oh when we were gosh. very young. And once they hit a certain age, they would recast the role entirely to <sighs> either their sister, or their brother, or. They'll just recast because the voice would change it like, you know, about 12, wow. 12, they'd just be wow a little bit way. too old. So I was very lucky that when Gohan grew up, I was able to voice him through the Cell Saga, which is completely oh, so you know, cool. the manliest, most My gross, favorite. Clint Eastwood voice I could come up with. Favorite saga. Yeah, the, <laughs> let's do this. Yes. I mean, that's like, <laughs> and screaming and yelling and fighting and exertions and reactions. And um, I guess I was kind of trained a little already but not just with the acting but they're, they're just constantly using and listening intently on on voices right and mm. mimicking and singing like my favorite singers and performing so much yeah. i think that i just got a really good grasp of what my voice is capable capable of well Absolutely. would you say that as a voice actor um listening is almost as important as just as talking absolutely mm-hmm. you have to have a really good keen ear and i think that for me and some other people in my industry or my line of work, they are, uh, a lot of the, the voice actors I've met have some kind of a history with uh, involving music, whether it be um, a musician or a vocalist or something that involves music. And with dubbing, you actually have to know how to do how to create your voice at the same time as maybe memorizing the line and doing it on cue in the right like matching the the flaps so if you're you're dubbing you know a japanese anime in english that's a whole nother technique that Mm -hmm. has to be learned um so that you can be efficient at it and be able to take direction and kind of be thinking about all these different layers of coming up with this voice that encompasses all of these different things so it was really something that you know i just had to listen carefully and watch and like you said listen um, I mean, I'm my own worst critic. I mean, if if I if somebody else might think I'm good at this voice or that voice, if if I don't think it's bang on or, or no, it's sounds a little too well, much. You're like always this trying other one. to improve yourself, right? You, know, you, you don't want to be stagnant in Never. what you're doing. And being utilized in, is important too. So that's why I'm I'm um, chomping at the bit to just yeah. you know be be selected for some new project that it that's just something maybe a female character or maybe Absolutely. like yeah. uh, Absolutely. another Love kid character or yeah. something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, that would be cool. I, I did get that opportunity with uh, KO, with OK mm-hmm. KO, Let's yep. Be Heroes. Defend the plaza! Oh, you know, no I got way. that voice <laughs> cool. through a fan of Dragon Ball Z who kind of handpicked who he thought might be good for the roles. Right. Thankfully, I was chosen for that one to help with the with the pilot. That that one was done different. We That wasn't a Japanese anime. We actually recorded first and then oh, they animated cool. around us so oh, all i had was like a storyboard oh, that's or like awesome. sketches to where we could kind of have an idea of the age or what this character might look like and so that was like a whole different ball of wax and a whole wow. different procedure in the mm-hmm. way that they recorded and how they you know constructed yeah. everything and put it all together so that was my um my first real american what original episode that you ever did 
uh, well, for um, ever as a voice actor would yeah, be, as would be like actor. episode fifty three of Dragon Ball Z. That was Gin, it was the Ginyu Saga, and um, I learned you know as we went along the history with mm-hmm. all of that and how we were actually replacing the OG Canadian Ocean Dub voice actors. We found all this out later as we went along and. You know, we meet together at cast parties and talk about it, and that's when we kind of learned the history of Dragon Ball Z, and then, of course, now it's still going. It's, it's this huge franchise. Well, that's no better series that's, to be on. That's, yeah, I know. Absolutely. I'm just glad. I'm yeah. glad that my voice was heard somewhere along the way and that I was able yes. to do and be at that audition. I wasn't on tour yeah. at the time or whatever. It really worked out, and being cast in the show um, has been life-changing. Yeah. I mean, even more so in a lot of ways than my, than my music, yeah. um, just because it had such a huge audience... It already had such crazy, yeah. outrageous popularity yeah. before I had a part up of it. With your voice, yeah, exactly. And you'll it's be this. identified with that character for the rest. Of Josh, and creation. that's why when you asked me, I'm like <laughs> Donna <laughs> Summer. I'm right, right here. here. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I was a hopefully a good babysitter as well. I, tell <laughs> right? my, I got anime babies all over the world, <laughs> and I'm like, how did I do? I was now just, go to your room. Uh, I was <laughs> I was punching bases and just like oh. playing around with Dragon Ball Z while I was working out. Uh, Screaming, acting out, out the, yeah, the characters. Mainly just like, mm-hmm. mainly just trying to like kamehameha, like basically anything in my living room. So yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> destroy everything. Yeah, just destroy before, everything. Before mom and dad yeah. got home. Uh, yeah, no, and then I don't know. The dog did it. I don't yeah, know. I didn't yeah. have a dog by the way. We did the uh, same. My, like I said, brothers just yeah. climbing trees, yep. falling out of, yep. uh, trying to throw footballs yeah. better yep. than they can, and uh, there was a lot of that going on. So with Dragon Ball Z being as big as it is, and it's huge, my kids love well one of my kids love, loves and my son my daughters could care less but yeah <laughs> when did you think man i'm a part of something special uh you know i i really did fairly early on i because like so i started recording my f- official first day was i think december of 98 or early january of 99 um in fact that was our 10 year anniversary right? year. Oh, that was no. a, that was a big oh, I know that was, age thing that was a big yeah. year for, for for a lot of stuff in my life. My actually my mom was diagnosed with cancer right when I was cast wow. and from the time I started working till August of 99 was my last days with my mom. Wow. And which was came out of nowhere. So I look back at it now and it's like that was a just a huge giant giant transformation year for me in so many ways. Mm-hmm. Um uh, things that were completely untimely and unforeseen happened. And then, um, like you said, I from moving around and, and just having to kind of go through a lot of emotional bullying and stuff, it really kind of, I think, brought out that resilience that was you know, something I didn't know I had. Because, mm-hmm. you know, life will throw throw you some curveballs. We oh, all know yeah. that. And we yeah. can't, none of us can escape, you know, loss and suffering and things like that. But um so when it came time to voice Gohan, especially in the Cell Saga, I had a I had a real life experience to pull from the emotion behind losing my mother when he, you know, Gohan lost his father. Mm-hmm. You know, the father son Kamehameha, you know, there's there was a lot of real life experience that I was able to utilize to really get and capture that raw emotion wow. of a of a crying boy, um, mm-hmm. but trying wow. desperately to survive and and do the right thing and have you know call on a power that he didn't really think he could do just from not being unsure mm-hmm. or thinking i'm not i can't do this i can't do oh, i'm just man. a kid you know or whatever i know the whole scene yeah. god so, i'm like playing it out right now oh the cell saga this. but yeah, i'm just really glad this, that yeah. i was able to produce a completely different voice to yeah. encompass one like right. that um mm-hmm. because in my opinion i think the voices are they are the same from mm-hmm. they're coming from me the source is the same but the 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 voice itself is completely different. Mm, yeah. So Absolutely. wow, that so like I was totally unfamiliar with Dragon Ball Z, and mm-hmm. roughly two thousand mid two thousands um, happened. The old job I had, we were like we didn't do a lot, so it was kind of just oh let's watch TV for a moment, and we put on Dragon Ball Z and, and stuff, and started doing <laughs> some things, and just this led to that, to this, to that, and found out that that's Stephanie the daughter. I said, Stephanie. I know that name. I know that <laughs> name. It's kind of a different one. It can't one. be. It can't be. I it didn't do the be. show name thing. Like, I'm like, it can't be. And I, oh, wow. Yeah. Then we started talking to people and found out, oh, it is her. She's, I was like, man, I yeah. know a superstar. Yeah, and I didn't, <laughs> even, think, I didn't even think about like like that. And then when you were asking me what my first moment was when I really realized, okay, this is bigger than what I thought it was, was probably after that first year. Mm. And then we went into 2000. 
um, in the year 2000. <laughs> uh, I was traveling with my show band, Vince Vance and the Valiants, and we went to Europe. And when I went to Europe, I was in my hotel room, and I turned on the TV, and I saw Dragon Ball Z in Italian. Wow. And, my, and Gohan was there. My character was there. And I'm like, wow. that's when I, I think I realized. And mm-hmm. then when I went looking at souvenir stores and things, they had Dragon Ball Z, right. you know, yeah. memorabilia and, wow. and shirts and hoodies and and manga and, and comics. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is a big deal. And then when they did the Burger King yep. thing, oh, yeah. where they yeah, released yeah. the the Dragon Ball mm-hmm. Z characters right, yeah. in the kids' Crazy meal. collectible. Yeah. So yeah. those those were the moments along, coupled with my first Comic-Con appearance mm-hmm. where uh, me wow. and three other characters, um, main characters from the Dragon Ball Z era there at the beginning, we all were invited to be guests at the San Diego Comic-Con, which wow. I'd never even That's been fantastic. to one. So what better one to start with than that one? That one right. was just ginormous and i remember <laughs> carrie fisher was there and i oh got goodness. to meet peter mayhew and wow. um and i think that was the defining big third moment right. where i was like I'm, okay this is a really but i thought it was just going to kind of be uh, not necessarily a flash in the pan mm-hmm. but like okay our work's done what's next because when you see shows on tv mm-hmm. talk shows okay we're going to introduce so and so and so well they're always putting out something new right so i always just kind of felt like you know not that it would be over forever but that it was kind of like the hype would die sure. down. And it did. It had had its mm-hmm. ebbs and flows. But, um, you know, now with Comic-Cons coming back, yep. you know, bigger and more often yes. than ever, I'm back in that scene right now. So this year's yep. been focusing on pop culture Comic-Cons and appearances and yep. signings and meet and greets and things, things like we did. Yeah. Yeah. Comic yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. So uh, stay busy with that. Yeah, that's the next thing is the cons. So I've been doing cons a lot this year as well as a vendor. Um, did mm-hmm. one a couple of weeks ago with Ben. He was across the way from me, which is yeah. I'm still amazed at this, at how... Um, with you especially, because you did, um, in Sherman, you did a couple of years ago, Wolverine Comics mm-hmm. had mm-hmm. their opening and had you there as a guest. Right. And the owners, I'd gotten to know know them and they were like, hey, we have this girl coming up from Durant. Do you happen to know her? Because they knew I was from Durant. I was like, yeah, I do that's, know her. That's crazy. And it was kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, now, that's not far away from where no, we went to no, middle school and high school. And now it's like, I go around and I'm seeing uh, your schedule, which is crazy busy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought mine was busy. Yours is crazy busy. But everything that everyone I know that's met you because you did a um you did a in store signing, I think, at one eight one comics in Fort Worth a few months ago. A mm-hmm. couple months ago. Um I know Sean and the guys over there. Yeah. And everyone to a person is amazed at you just from your energy to how kind you are to how oh, wow. um I'm inviting you are to all of your fans, everyone who comes oh, up, you yeah. take time and Oh, it's, yeah. It's really important, I think, for people like, you know, the Joshes of the world and even kids that are younger than Josh that, you know, wow, that's because to them, you are a celebrity. I mean, you're right. That person, and that's the, like, that's wow. just to me is just I, I it's hard for me to grasp that because mm-hmm. I'm just doing what I do and um, I just go after it and my passions are there. And I know that they've been vividly in my vision right since i was a kid but but that little kid that moved every couple of years and was like the the girl next door that just was friends with everybody mm-hmm. never left and my right. mom was like that too and so you know we were just always very um very down to earth and i just kind of grew up that way and was kind of surrounded by her and, and our families and um that just kind of remained Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, that's why I said I have anime babies because I wanted kids and couldn't have any. And so I have that time to devote to the fans. And so now I've got anime babies because most of the fans are much younger than I mm-hmm. am or they're in their 30s or they're watching it with their kids and they're starting their lives with, with a family. And um, so I've just kind of embraced that. And it's just really filled a big void for me personally. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right. Okay. So. We're gonna so wrap up okay. With oh, oh, that's with both of them because right. it affects both it of these with the oh, art yes. and art and create. Yeah, to talk about this topic. Yes, so writers, we creative open, writers, yeah. everything. It's gonna, it's affecting. Yeah. Uh huh. It's like where are we headed with all of this, right. and how are we gonna stop From taking away the yeah the human element. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Well, and you can, yeah. uh, at this point, we can usually notice what it is. Yeah. And we're like, hey, wait, that's not. 
but what if that's going to change? It's just going to get exactly, better yeah. and you know more more realistic mm -hmm. as far as real humanistic. Let me ask you a question. Um, I know that I'm sure you're aware that there's a writer's an actor strike going on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, where does voice actors fall in within that pantheon? I mean, is uh, right. Um, you know, I'm not working on anything brand new right now. So it's not affecting me really at all. All I'm doing is is doing meet and greets, basically stemming from work I did, you know, over 15 years ago. Well, that's good. Yeah. Mostly, um, and then whatever I do that's creative and writing, you know, obviously I've just been doing it home or whatever. Right, that writing. doesn't stop you from singing. Right, no, and, and I was sag aftra for a short time when I was working on uh, oh, really? OKKO okay oh, because that was I was flying to L.A. I went a couple times because we recorded with everybody, the whole cast, a whole <laughs> different process. So, um, but as far as right now, um, it's not affecting, thankfully, not affecting me no, right now. Good, but yeah. I was kind of wondering where do voice actors fall? Right. That, I think uh, it depends. I mean, there's there's got to be a way to look that up. And I, I know that I, I haven't gone out of out of the lines. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gray area, but uh, I, I didn't, I'm not, I work well, hard at not coloring outside the lines. Right. Uh, yeah, that's great, man. Okay. So I'm kind of in a nice little pocket right now mm -hmm. where I'm just there doing the go. Comic Cons yeah. like you are. Yeah. And meeting lots of awesome yes. vendors, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I love meeting the it's staff been so and the vendors. so much fun. Yes. It, I mean, to me, the biggest part of, yeah, uh, yeah man, of course I want to go and sell a lot of books and all that. Right. But it's so much fun to just meet people. Meet there, face to face. Hear their stories, how they yes. got into it. I've met so many creators, mm -hmm. art, um, authors, writers, artists. Yes. It's, there's a just voice a, actors just from, um, it's been It's amazing. a whole industry yeah. where we can kind of help each other out right. and like promote and then get to be mm -hmm. friends online with social media yep. and ca cross promote Absolutely. special events or, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to be with you again. Yeah. Or I And I like getting to know everyone at the end of the day when it's yep. time to go to dinner and kind of hang out yep. and really get to know who yes. these people are. Yeah. So um, it's a whole, it's a whole industry yeah. really. And especially coming out of COVID. Mm -hmm. Because I think that everybody just got really tired of staying mm. at home oh, yeah. for Absolutely. so long and, got, and having to shut down yeah. at what they were working on, especially creative <laughs> types. I know. Yeah, I've like, never been sick of my family, but I was sick of them. <laughs> right. I, need I needed a break. Give me some fresh faces. Yeah. Yes, and everyone <laughs> just, we were all locked away, and it was time to come out and mingle again. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I think that's been great, and I think that's why it's Absolutely. been so busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People yeah. are like, chomping at the bit to get back out, yeah. and they mm -hmm. sure are a lot of fun. But, you know, you do provide entertainment for people who were... Locked up. They can turn on. Yeah, the they can go to Dragon Ball. Right. Now. We had VHS tapes. <laughs> now we have right. DVDs, and then now you can, now I guess, streaming. stream. Yeah. You, are, you Every, are in their homes entertaining them. Yes, I'm glad to, to to see that it was such a outrageously popular franchise, oh, and that it's still yeah. and you alive. Had a lot to do with that because if you didn't have that, mm -hmm. you know, voice to express those characters, I bring them to it, life. That's right. People probably yeah. would not be interested in them at all. And living exactly. vicariously through a little boy, you know, it's like, yeah. I can't really right. be a little boy, exactly. so I don't sound like one. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> well, folks, um, got to say goodbye for now. Um, thank you for joining us um, again. Um, it was a pleasure. Oh, um, yeah. We an honor to have you here. Um, again, this is Beyond the Bubbles. Um, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us soon on Spotify and Apple. Original music. I'll also be uh, uploading some of the original stuff I did with Brave Combos founder Carl Finch, and hopefully that'll get up on Ooh. the World Wide Web of, of goodness. <laughs> right. So, but everything is that's a good spot to find me, and then Facebook and Instagram as well. I also have a TikTok. I'm Yay. having some fun with the videos. And I guess if they someone has a party, a wedding, something mm -hmm. like that that they need a really band quality for. entertainment. We do R and B, soul, jazz, Motown, country, and pop. It's kind of almost everything. It just kind of depends on what what the genre. May. The only thing we don't really do right now is the brand new stuff. You know, we don't do anything that's that's top 40 at this point, right. but we do a lot of the classics. Cool. Yeah. And Ben, do you want to tell us about your medias or your socials? Uh, well, you can find me on bendoncomics.com or Facebook or X or TikTok. I'm on there, so I'm not hard to find. Yes. <laughs> and isn't um, Antarctic Press also, so they have a Twitter, correct? Uh, I don't know. I... <laughs> oh, Ben, they do. I don't, Trust I'm me, they there. do. I follow them. I'm they not do. There. So I'm you not can... their did, uh, social media yep. guru, but, so... I have no idea. Well, this is what we like to do. We like to have fun. And um, for me, this is special because a old friend has Classmates. joined me. I Classmates. think it was probably eighth grade last time I saw you in person. Oh, jeez. Eighth grade. You know, a few years ago. Small world. Wow. Isn't it? I know. It's like it was yesterday. <laughs> well, and everything's coming back, but the, but, you know. Um, this was from like 
<laughs> this, man, this wasn't here yet, and it was, and if it was, it was dark. Yeah, I bet you. My, my hair was dark back, back then. When you were in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're going to quit on that All one. All right. Thanks, Ben. We've got plenty more to talk about next time. Don't Absolutely. Yes. yes. This is just the beginning. Thanks, guys. See y'all later. Like, subscribe.